Hello, I'm Rupert Turton and welcome to this episode of the Business Spotlight interviews where we talk to local business owners about their journey. Uh, this week I'm joined by Danny Flowers who has quite a history in the motor and insurance uh, services with uh, a number of businesses. So hello Danny. How are we doing? They're good. Yourself? Not bad, thank you. Not bad at all. So I think before we start, best thing to do is just explain a bit about you and your businesses and, and how long they've been going as well. It's quite quite a collection you have. Indeed, yes. So uh, if we start from the very beginning, uh, I was very fortunate uh, to be an apprentice in this sector uh, when I was 16. So uh, I've, been, I've been in the industry for a little over 17 years now. Um, yeah. Originally starting off as a claims handler within an insurance brokerage. I developed my career through into chief engineer. Um, and then around six or seven years ago, I thought I've had enough of making other people money. Uh, mm -hmm. time, time to do it for myself, essentially. Um, and we originally started off as a repair network in order yep. to supply services to the insurance sector. Um, that has since scaled. Um, so over the last six years, we've developed a repair network, a claims company, a recovery company, a software company providing software to the insurance sector, um, and an insurance brokerage. So right. we now look, look look at our clients from the very start that we supply uh, only in the commercial arena. So we don't look after any personal lines, uh, but in that commercial arena, we supply the insurance products from fleet, liabilities, employer's liability, public liability, and such like. Um, and we have our own in-house claims offering, which was part of our original founding, um, so that we can look after our clients from cradle to grave. We're very much about value before premiums. Uh, so how do we enhance that customer journey the minute they become a client of ours? Uh, and yeah. how do we differentiate ourselves, essentially? Yeah, yeah. So have you built those businesses organically or have you built part of the business through acquisition? Okay, so we built organically. The originally started off in my living room um, with a second-hand laptop and an old mobile phone. Um, yeah. And we essentially scaled them based on winning business um, and then we'd be asked to do something else. Um, so originally we'd have a subcontractor that we'd utilize. Uh, and, and more often than not, I'm the sort of person that will look at an operation and say, I think this can be done better. Um, yeah. I think the age old saying of we've always done it that way is dangerous in business. Uh -huh. um, so I'd often look at what our supply chain is doing and say, we, we could acquire this business, but then we'd have to fix a lot about it. Or we could yeah. just do it ourselves. Uh, so we just decided to do it ourselves. Um, all of the businesses have been started on Lean Startup, so I'm not a big fan of throwing loads of cash into something on a whim. Um, so they've all been done on Lean Startup, uh, and we've just developed them organically and, and grown them and just seen what the limitations of those businesses are, really. Well, also yeah. the limitations of ourselves. Yeah. Okay. So what's been your biggest learning since you've owned your own businesses? Um, my biggest learning is probably the pain of employing people more often than not, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah. The, the, the challenges that that faces. Um, I, I certainly learned a lot about myself during COVID. Um, we, at, at that time, had three offices around the country with our, the, you know, the heart of the business saying in Northamptonshire. Uh, and we had around 50 or 60 employees. Um, I, I think we had become the business that we didn't necessarily set out to achieve. But yeah. I, I was still relatively young at that time. I suppose you could argue a bit of an inexperienced chief exec. Uh, and guiding the business through that period uh, and guiding the people through that uh, was probably the biggest challenge that I faced. And I think the biggest learning that I, I took from that. And what I would say to anyone essentially that are starting on that journey of employing people or, or managing teams is just be true to who you are um, mm -hmm. and it, it's okay that you're not always going to keep people happy that's okay yeah. that's not a problem um, it, it's okay to get things wrong and to make mistakes yeah but as long as you can do that with real integrity and know that you've been true to who you are as an individual I think you'll come out of it the other side um, yeah. quite well. And, and certainly that's my experience from COVID being my biggest learning experience of I allowed myself and the business to become something that I didn't want it to be pre-COVID. And during COVID, um, I suppose I had to kick up the backside uh, that yeah. I needed, I think, uh, just to reground us um, and reground the business. And it's been a good thing for us. So what changed then in the business during COVID? 
Um, we, so we were impacted by COVID and legislation changes that meant we uh, essentially lost around 90% of our business overnight. Mm-hmm. Um, however, we pivoted um, and I, I took the decision that we weren't going to continue on the same path that we were on and we were going to try a different path. And that was okay. essentially the launch of the insurance brokerage. Um, I genuinely believe without the right direction and the right strategies that sat behind it, we probably wouldn't be here today. Um, okay, but yeah. we, we, we've rebuilt the business and I think we're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, though. It took an, an, an event that big to make you realise that things needed to change as well. I, I think you, in business, you become guilty of... Uh, but particularly as an owner, let's be honest, when, when you set up a business, you set up with a business based on, you know, a lot of the times lifestyle aspirations. Yeah, um, of course. And when, when, when you achieve those lifestyle aspirations, it's really, really easy to just sit back and say, do you know what, I've achieved what I want to achieve. Let's just keep going and keep doing what we are doing. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's not until you have that realisation that people are important um yeah. that, you know you get trapped in that lifestyle uh that, that little circle of living a certain lifestyle and, and you realize people are important connections are important uh, and, and you're you're important i, I think um and I, I think that's what covid essentially created it created an, an opportunity to hit reset um yeah. and, and i say to a lot of young people when i talk to them that they want to go into business um uh, around being true about who you are and i think covid created that opportunity be the person that you want to be and when you walk into a room you define that person um, yeah and ultimately people's opinions are only defined by what you give um, so I, I think covid created that opportunity for people yeah and it sounds like your motivation has moved from being one of materialistic i.e you've got enough money coming in and presumably house kids and all the stuff that goes with it yeah. motorbikes yeah. from what we we're talking about before we started yeah. the interview as well but uh to being much more if you like aspirational in terms of you wanted value and and the way the culture worked within the business and the sort of people that you're working with as well yeah absolutely i mean don't get me wrong i'm still the guy that's guilty of having the flash car so i think that that's never going to change but that's the petrol head in me more than anything um but i i, I think you I come from a council estate, single mum, uh, broken home. So we, you know, we grew up properly poor. We had nothing, um, and I think you have these aspirations of having these nice things, you know, Range Rovers, Porsches, the, the big house. Um, yeah. And, and, and I, I don't think that's wrong. You, you know, I started my business when I was 26 years old. Of course, I was young and naive, and I wanted the flash cars. I wanted to to be the the man, so to speak. So I was young and stupid. Um, I think would be a, a perfect. Uh, explanation of that um, but I, I, I would certainly agree that now I you know got the big house got the flash car but they're all material um, yeah. do, do, do they define me as a person no when you know uh, without sounding too morbid when I die people aren't going to describe me as driving around in a, uh, a flash motor they're going to describe the legacy that I've left behind and that's yeah. prescribed by how you treat people um, so certainly culture is a massive thing for us as a business um I set the business up on with an aspiration around family values. I think when you get to a certain size, you can lose that, and it's really easy to lose that. Um, and yeah. I think, you know, all, all chief executives, all directors, all founders of businesses at a certain size, whether they like it or not, lose connection um, yeah. with the people because you have to, it happens. Um, I was guilty of that. I've taken those steps to change that and that's taken a lot of self-reflection a lot of the way i speak a lot of the way i communicate with people uh, how i am perceived um and and i went extreme so we we uh moved to a new building i got rid of my own office um Mm -hmm. so i went to an extreme length of making sure that i was part of the team and i drove that culture forward i now sit in the middle of our sales floor with our people uh talking and joking it's really important that you humanize job titles I, I don't like job titles anymore i don't like to refer to them um uh, call me the t-boy for all i care i really couldn't care less about a, a job title and i think that's really important that we have to break down those job title barriers um yeah. in order to enhance culture enhance where we are going as a business and i think all businesses have to take those steps um, and certainly we've seen 
it, it, we, we've seen growth at an astronomical rate as a result of prioritizing people over profit. Yeah. Um, profits ultimately will look after themselves. Don't wrong, we have to be profitable, we have to make money. I'm not to lose, yeah, yeah. I've, still got a mortgage, I've still got a mortgage to pay. Uh, yeah. and, and the kids to feed so I'm not delusional um, but I think by looking after the people and re rewarding them much greater than just money actually drives yeah. a level of attraction that wouldn't be achievable in an environment that is just a high pressure sales environment yeah no and no, it's um i think it's so true what you say as well actually if, you, if the people are happy everything else sort of flows so you do need to look yeah. after your team and i also understand very much that that gets a lot harder as the company gets bigger and bigger when it's just you and 10 other people you, you're omnipresent aren't you but uh yeah, when, exactly. when it grows beyond that it becomes a lot harder to uh, even, to, to keep the culture more, going through the business absolutely even more so when you've got offices that are 100 miles away um, yeah and, and what our office that we opened up north is that we've since closed that down and again as part of that development of the business and that opened about two months before lockdown and oh right so i had staff in uh, up north that had only met me via teams um, mm. and that certainly creates a level of disconnect um yeah. and, and that's always been something important to me that i'm a face i'm very visible to our supply chain to our customers to our staff so I think that was a challenge. So I, I think it is a challenge for bigger businesses. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't claim to have the magic wand. What I did for my business won't necessarily work for all businesses. But yeah. I think if you keep an open mind, then you have half an opportunity. Yeah. With all that said, then, what are your aspirations for the business in the next five years? Um, so, so my aspiration is a little bit uh, multifaceted for the if that's the appropriate word. Um, so uh, my short to medium term aspirations for the business are to continue on our growth strategies. Yeah, um, that's certainly the case. Those growth strategies will lead into uh, a aspiration that I have to create a minimum level of salary for all of our staff. Um, okay. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I aim for all employees that come into the business to be on an entry level salary of forty thousand pounds a year. Um, yeah, yeah. Whether I'll achieve that or not is is questionable, but it, I think it's right to have those aspirations. Yeah. Uh, the, the the my view has always been really simple that I want the people around me to benefit from what we have built, and and mm -hmm. I am uh, you know I accept that I am nothing in my business is nothing without the the team that I surround myself with. Yeah. Um, so I want them to be rewarded. Um, we, you know, we've never had this age or male, female that, that sort of mindset. It's always been about the right people. Um, yeah. So I, I want that to be our entry level salary coming into the business. Um, of course, I have an exit strategy. Um, I think anyone that sets up a business without an exit strategy is probably going off, off half hearted and will ultimately create a job for themselves uh, yeah. rather than creating a business. Um, so I hope to exit the business within the next five years. Um, the the start of that exit strategy is essentially three years from now. Yeah. Um, and I expect that it could take, you know, three to five years for that exit to continue. Yeah. Um, some of my conditions around that exit will be about protecting the people Yeah. Uh, as well. Uh, and then beyond that, um, I, I want to focus more on giving back. I think... Um, you know, I, I enjoy working with young people. I enjoy working with business owners and struggling businesses, um, particular, particularly um, those distressed businesses. So, I, I think that will be my aim. Should I exit, um, essentially, yeah. keeping the motivation. I'm still young. I've still got plenty yeah. to give. So, why not? Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I have to say your approach is very structured as well. You've got it all quite well mapped out. So presumably you've got somebody who is educating, mentoring you, even coaching you in the background as well? No, um, I don't at all, um, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a very black and white kind of person. Um, yeah. for, for me, there are no grey areas. Um, and I think if you, I, I am very fortunate that I do surround myself with people that have exited businesses, that are building yeah. businesses. Is I have the very fortunate position that some of my clients have very large organisations that were set up by an individual that remains active in their business. Um, and I think the most powerful tool that you have is your ears. Sit and listen, observe, see what's going on. Um, mm. I know in, this, in, the, in the insurance sector specifically, 
acquisitions have been right for for a long time, and they continue to be right. The valuations of insurance brokers alone is that you know is it's not measured in the same way as a typical business valuation in terms of EBITDA. Um, so no, I, I don't uh, I don't have a mentor or a coach. Um, if I'm honest, what I I just I do a lot of research, a lot of reading. It's very black and white. Um, yeah. I don't don't have aspirations. I, I, I'm a person that doesn't believe in pensions, whether you know people agree with that or doesn't agree, don't agree with that. I, I believe that we all have an ability to create wealth. Um, yeah. And we can, uh, our society has been ingrained to, to believe that that's not possible. And I don't believe that, it, that that's yeah. true. Um, so I, I'm focused on creating wealth and creating an opportunity for me to be able to essentially retire relatively young and yeah. then continue to do the things that I enjoy. Um, and I think those personal aspirations are what essentially create a very rooted strategy that yeah. it's okay to have an idea, but if you don't put a strategy behind it, it's never anything more than just an idea. When you start a business and build a business, it all starts from an idea and then a strategy follows. So yeah. why should you not have the same thing when it comes to exiting your business? Yeah, uh, of you have to develop the strategy that enables you to achieve that. And yeah. the building blocks that that takes, that three to five years, is about we've got to prove to, if I'm ever going to exit my business, I have to think about it from a buyer's mindset. No one wants to see consistent profits. I want to see whether there is a the growth there uh, yeah. and what they can get from that. And if that's a venture capitalist, for example, it might be that they're looking to acquire lots of businesses in order to bring them into one in order to capitalize on market share um, if it's not a venture capitalist and it's another independent then what value can i bring to their business yeah. um so it's about preparing the business for that exit uh, but no 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 coach or mentor just um clearly a guy that's got too much time to read <laughs> uh, and i listen a lot yeah well brilliant so, um so from a personal point of view then who is the first person that comes to mind when you think about success? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, I, I, the, the, it's a, a question that I thought about um, a lot, to be fair. And I think it depends how you define success. If we look at business success, you know, we've there's plenty of serial entrepreneurs out there that have been hugely successful in business. But there's... Does building a business, big business and have a lot of money define success? Um, you know, I, I could argue my wife's been extremely successful. She's given me five children. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I think there's that argument. Um, I think, you know, I could argue my mum's been successful, single parent. That, that You know, I, I think success is relatively dependent on how you want to measure success. Yeah. Um, I often look at the... There, there is very little value in measuring yourself against someone else um, yeah. because ultimately you can only ever be left with disappointment. And uh, I, I'm the sort of individual that continues to push. I, I'm never quite happy. I'm never quite settled. There's a reason that I've got six businesses for cost capital. That's because I've just gone, yeah, do that as well. Um, so yeah. I, I think um, I think success can only be defined by how happy you are. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, you could have a caravan holiday in Skegness and that would be the most amazing holiday you've ever been on. And you can have a round-the-world cruise and think that's the most amazing holiday you've been on. Equally, you could have thought the cruise was terrible and you preferred the caravan. Yeah. It's, it's depending on where on where you're happy. Where is your peace? Where, where do you find that you're at your best uh, I think as a person and uh, yeah. your most happiness. So I don't know. I can't answer that question without sounding like a politician. If I'm honest. <laughs> yes, well, you're doing a great job of the politician bit there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool. Okay. So, Dan, it's been great talking to you. Before we finish, oh, if hi. somebody needs to talk to you or, or one of your businesses, what's the best way to connect? Um, so the best way to connect with me directly um, is probably through LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. So. Uh, I've built my own hashtag, hashtag the insurance CEO. Um, yeah. Search into that on LinkedIn, you bring up my profile. If you want a bit of a laugh, then you find me on TikTok using the exact same, the insurance CEO. Um, yeah. It's just a lot of fun with the kids. Um, or, of course, online, motorandpythonservices.com.
shot on the website. Um, but it depends if you want to speak to the business, motor hyphen services, you want to speak to me, I just the insurance CEO or the insurance CEO as well. Great, cool. Danny, lovely chat. Actually, really like yeah, where you're coming right. from as well. Really interesting. I think there's a lot for a lot thank of you. other business owners to pick up in that as well. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. Lovely. Pleasure speaking to you, Rupert. Cheers.